Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, March 21st. Tesla stock is surging amid data coming out of China, showing that the automaker will likely deliver a strong quarter in this important market. At the time of writing the article, Tesla stock was up 6%, while the market was down about 1%. China is a critical market for Tesla and electric vehicles in general. Tesla's performance in China often makes a difference in whether they'll have a good quarter overall. In Electrek's take, everything is pointing for Tesla to have a great first quarter in terms of deliveries. However, the attention will be on Tesla's gross margin, which Tesla already has shown industry-leading numbers. They are large enough to eat up some of the price cuts that have happened recently, but investors are hoping for Tesla to still be in the double digits. A new report states that Tesla engineers tried to convince Elon Musk not to give up on radar for autopilot and the full self-driving effort. They write, quote, In May of 2021, Tesla announced that it was eliminating radar on new cars. Soon after, the company began disabling radar in cars already on the road. The result, according to the interviews, with nearly a dozen former employees and test drivers, safety officers, and experts, was an uptick in crashes and near misses and other embarrassing mistakes by Tesla vehicles suddenly deprived of the critical sensor. Now, Musk has been vocal that he believes that higher definition radars would improve autopilot and full self-driving, but the report also goes on to say that Musk has several autopilot engineers, even Ashok Elmsway, the head of autopilot and self-driving software, spend their time working on Twitter. Ford finally took the sheets off of its new electric Explorer SUV built on the Volkswagen MEV platform. The new five-seat family SUV combines what they call American design with top-notch German engineering, resulting in a futuristic, stylish mid-size crossover. There won't be a seven-seat option, at least initially. Seems like a missed opportunity. It will come in two different trims, the Explorer and Explorer Premium with the base level expected to start at less than 45,000 euros. Ford says that it'll be able to charge the vehicle from 10 to 80% in 25 minutes with access to 500,000 charging stations across Europe. Now, if you ask me, it's actually a little strange that this vehicle is launching first in Europe instead of the USA, where the SUV is king. Perhaps it's a symbol of Ford's commitment to being an American-style vehicle in the European market. Hyundai has revealed that it has developed an EV charging robot that automatically plugs in using a 3D camera-based AI algorithm. They're calling it the ACR, or Automatic Charging Robot. This one seems a bit further along compared to the prototypes that we've seen in the past. In fact, Hyundai says that the robot can operate in all environments with a waterproof and dustproof grade of IP65 and can even detect possible accidents. Well, many of the first robots that we would compare this to would be from the Tesla Snake prototype years ago. Ford actually tested a robotic EV charger, and also Ram showed one off fairly recently. I'm starting to get the sense that plugging in a car, something that seems futuristic to many people today, might soon be a thing of the past. This week's episode is sponsored by SAE International, hosts of the WCX World Congress Experience event. For 2023, WCX is set to return to Detroit from April 18th to 20th at Huntington Place. As the largest technical mobility event in North America, WCX brings together thousands of engineers, suppliers, and mobility professionals to exchange ideas, discuss today's challenges, and build powerful relationships to move your career and the industry forward. Join the global mobility community in the Motor City this April to stay up to date on the latest technological advances, participate in roundtable discussions, and network with the brightest minds in the industry. Gain a competitive advantage and meet the people shaping the future of mobility. Visit wcx.sae.org to register now. According to a draft proposal recently seen by the media, the European Commission has reportedly added an amendment to the 2035 combustion vehicle ban that allows for the sale of internal combustion engine vehicles after the expiry. It's only so long as they run entirely on climate-neutral e-fuels. Now, this effort was led by Germany. The draft states that e-fuel cars would be required to come equipped with technology that would prevent them from operating if any other fuel was used. Two sources familiar with the discussions between the European Union Commission and Germany 
state that the revised proposal suggesting the new combustion vehicles must be able to distinguish between carbon neutral and traditional fuels, and that remains a problematic situation because automakers would have to make new engines to do so. This undoubtedly will delay the deployment of electric vehicles in Europe at least a little bit. However, market forces are still buying them in many numbers. General Motors' self-driving rideshare unit called Cruise has applied for permission to expand testing of its robotaxi rides throughout all of California. Services that began in San Francisco have since expanded to Phoenix, Arizona, and most recently Austin, Texas. In February, Cruise president, CEO, and co-founder Kyle Vaught shared that the company had surpassed 1 million miles driven without anyone behind the wheel. It hasn't been all sunshine and roses, however. Last September, they recalled 80 vehicles after an accident that injured two people. Now, for the rides coming to the rest of California, Cruise says that the rides will be limited to Cruise employees at first, as additional licenses will be needed to expand to customers, whether they pay or not. According to a recent report from China, CATL has successfully achieved mass production of its energy-dense Qilin batteries, capable of delivering considerable increase in range. CATL's new cells utilize the 4680 pack structure and will debut on the upcoming Zeker 009. Local media reports that CATL's new packs have 13% higher capacity than other 4680 ternary batteries of the same volume. They are targeting 621 miles of range for this first equipped vehicle. Now, if you're curious, the name Qi Lin comes from a mythical beast of Chinese mythology, somewhere between a dragon and a horse. I'm sure that's why you came to Quick Charge. Aptera Motors has announced its first fleet order from Sustainability Sooner Incorporated. The initial pre-order is for 101 vehicles, and the order has the potential to grow to over 10,000. Of course, all things running smoothly. While debuting its first launch edition solar EV this last January, Aptera's co-founder shared that the startup still requires tens of millions of dollars to officially begin production. Things are looking up, at least a little bit, as Aptera Motors shared the details of their first ever fleet order just today. Sustainability Sooner Incorporated is working to alleviate climate change using what is called climaculture, the science and practice of cultivating plants and organisms synchronously with land management to produce clean, sustainable air, water, and energy. Sounds lovely. The company states its pre-order fleet of Aptera Solar EVs will enable it to scout and locate raw land sites more sustainably. Aptera Solar Electric Vehicles are still available for pre-order, and hundreds of slots for the launch edition still remain open, if you want to go get one. In today's community comment found on YouTube, most of you commented on the class of EV 2022, and you responded saying that Tesla was in the top spot. But, of course, you called it various names. President of the Universe, First Class Honors Degree, Guest Speaker, First Student, Goodwill Rising, and like me, Tom said that Tesla was the valedictorian. In another note, Roger Starkley wondered if anyone was designing an electric vehicle truck with a lower hood. Well, Roger, the first thing that came to my mind was the canoe. Early prototypes show the vehicle with a window where the firewall or the hood would normally be located, but it seems as though that feature did not carry over when they made the prototype of their truck a little bit later on. Personally, I would prefer a window over the folding table, but I'm sure they have other good reasons for that change. Oh well, at least we can look forward knowing that lots of things are changing in the car industry all the way around. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.